In this video I'm going to go over 8 simple tips and tricks to improve your soldering skills. This video is proudly sponsored by JLC PCB, who offer high quality PCBs at very affordable prices. They offer fast production time as quick as 24 hours from ordering to your order being shipped worldwide, and ordering is as simple as uploading your Gerber file and choosing your design preferences. Order 5 PCBs from as little as $2. Clean your iron. If your soldering iron tip looks like this, well frankly you need help, but to clean it first remove the iron tip, then grab a drill and fasten the tip in the drill chuck. Next take an angle grinder with a grinding disc attached and don't forget to put on your eye and hearing protection. Now the key to success with this technique is to have the drill rotate the tip while the grinder gently cleans the tip for you. This might take some practice to get it just right but when you do just check out those results as good as new. Of course that was completely fake. You should avoid using abrasives to clean your iron including files and sandpaper. To clean your iron the right way you'll need flux, a damp sponge or brass wool and some solder, preferably flux core solder. First melt some solder on your iron then dip the iron into the flux. Wipe the iron on a damp sponge or your brass wool and depending on how dirty your iron is you may need to repeat this process a few times until your iron looks like this. Just check out those before and after comparisons. Nice. Toxic lead fumes. It's a common misconception that the vapors seen venting from the solder is lead based. That's not true. The vapors are mostly from the flux being heated. However it's still not a good idea to breathe on the vapors. The vapors can irritate your eyes and lungs. There are plenty of options online to buy a fume extractor but if you don't have the money for one, a cheaper option is to use a large 12 volt computer fan wired up to either a wall adapter or battery pack. Of course this isn't actually filtering or removing the vapors out of the air, but it does stop the vapors from being concentrated around your work area. Temperature controlled iron. It might sound like a luxury, but I'd argue it's a necessity. Depending on the type of solder you are using, each type of solder has an ideal working temperature. Too cold and the solder won't flow properly, and on the flip side when dealing with temperature sensitive components such as ICs, then getting the solder excessively hot could damage components. If you don't own a temperature controlled soldering iron, then check out my review video on the TS80 soldering iron, it's packed full of features at a great price. Flux is your friend. Flux comes in many forms. You can buy flux in a pot, flux in a pen which is particularly useful for circuit boards, or my personal favourite flux core solder. Flux core solder has a hollow centre which is filled with, you guessed it, flux. This is very convenient because every time you melt some solder it automatically has flux applied for you. Flux is very important. It can clean connections, helps the solder to flow properly and helps to prevent the solder from forming an oxide layer. Over time solder will change its appearance, starting out shiny and eventually turning dull. If I scrape off the oxide layer you can see underneath it is still clean and shiny. Trying to tin this copper wire with solder that has built up an oxide layer is quite frankly a nightmare. You can see the solder isn't tinning the copper as it should and basically all I'm doing is smearing the solder across the wire. So I'll clean my iron and apply some fresh solder and try this again. As you can see this time the solder immediately tins the copper. Tinning. Does this sound familiar? You melt some solder on your iron, put two wires together that you want joined and then apply the solder only to have the solder refuse to join the two wires together. This can be incredibly frustrating, so let me show you the correct method. Before attempting to join the wires together, first we need to tin each wire separately. Apply a small amount of solder to your iron, 
place the iron on the wire and let the iron heat up the wire for you. Then apply enough solder until you can no longer see the individual strands of wire anymore. Once both wires are tinned, joining them together will be a walk in the park. Use quality solder. That cheap solder sold at the dollar store might seem tempting, but honestly don't waste your money. Using a cheap solder will put you off soldering altogether. This is some cheap no-brand solder. This stuff is impossible to work with. Watch what happens when I try to tin this wire. The solder isn't wetting the copper, and in fact is literally flaking and falling off of the wire. So throw that stuff in the bin and buy some branded quality solder. In comparison, look how easy it is to tin the same cable using a quality solder. Heat. To achieve a solid electrical and mechanical connection, the solder should flow not because your iron is hot, rather the solder should flow because the component you are soldering is hot. Think of your soldering iron as nothing more than a heater. To demonstrate this, I'll put my iron on the wire and leave it there for a few seconds to allow the wire to get up to temperature. Notice how I'm not melting the solder directly on the iron, instead I'm able to melt the solder directly on the wire. Use a cold iron for heat sensitive components. Some electronic components can be very heat sensitive and you might think it's better to use a cold iron in this case, but you'd be wrong. A cooler iron temperature can mean you have to leave your iron on the connection for longer than normal, slowly roasting your ICs until they're medium rare. It's actually better to use a hotter iron. This way you are able to quickly solder the connection and keep heat soaking the component to a minimum. So thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful or entertaining please give it a like, it would be much appreciated. If you have any questions or comments leave them down in the comment section below and also consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.